Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm talking about Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. It's a sequel to Rise of the Planet of the Apes. It's directed by Matt Reeves, a different director than the last movie. It stars Jason Clark, and Andy Serkis is back as the motion capture performance for Caesar, which is absolutely breathtaking is how he does his work and how good the motion capture looks itself. The CGI is incredible. It was, in my opinion, one of the best of the year. Um, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes fast forwards a whole lot through time than where we last left off. It fast forwards to a deserted San Francisco. The weeds are growing throughout all the city. Mankind is struggling to find power and food and the apes are the ones who's ruining, ruling everything. Caesar has created a colony. He's created his army. He has, they have their own setup, their own community up in the wilderness. Jason Clark plays a citizen who goes with his wife and kid and a group of people up into the wilderness to ask Caesar for food because they are running out and their power is out and the only source of electricity where they have to fix the problem is located in Caesar's territory in his army. The first sign we see of Caesar in the apes is absolutely breathtaking. It's on Caesar's eyes and it just pans out and there's just, just this army of them all up in the trees. The rain is falling. It's absolutely gorgeous. Gorgeous directing by Matt Reeves here. And terrific writing too actually. You really, once again you feel the humanistic side of these apes. Caesar has a wife and child now. He has about the 10 year old son, I think. And then he gives birth to a younger son in this movie. And Gary Oldman plays the villain in this film. He is sort of the leader of the human community. And they are just scared of these apes. Whenever they go to visit Caesar and ask him for help, they are really scared of these apes because these apes have learned how to use weapons. They are riding horses. They are threatening. They are scary. And they hate the humans because the humans just think they're animals and they just kill them like no problem. And everyone in the group respects the apes. They, res they want peace. They just want to talk to them. But one character in the human group who you grow to hate, just he, he, can't, he can't take authority from these apes. And he, he'll carry a gun and he'll try to shoot them when they're trying not to shoot them. They just want peace. They just want to talk. And he just ruins everything. And so you really see this conflict brewing set up for the next movie, War for the Planet of the Apes. I'll be reviewing that next. You see this conflict brewing and it's there. But they both just, Caesar wants peace and then Jason Clark's character wants peace. They both want peace. But there is another ape named Kubo who is much more violent than Caesar and he hates the humans for what they did to him back in the testing facility and he hates them for what they are, which is they think they're more than the apes, which the apes, or this Kubo in particular, thinks they are more than the humans. So it causes a lot of problems and Kubo ends up betraying Caesar and won't listen to him. He goes to the civilization and creates chaos. He kills two humans by just acting like he's all innocent and then he shoots them. You really see this evil in this Kubo character and he's just an ape but you see this evil person inside him and once again there's a person acting behind the motion capture and it's great and Kubo comes back to the civilization that Caesar and them have built and he tells Caesar these lies saying the humans tried to shoot him so he killed them and he, just, he creates these lies and Caesar still won't listen to him. Caesar just wants to protect his family and have peace. Well, Kubo ends up betraying Caesar and shoots him. And Caesar falls off. He thinks Caesar's dead. Kubo takes over. He tells everyone that Caesar died accidentally. The humans killed him. He wants the, the apes to go and take over the humans. I mean... He's, it's all lies because Caesar wanted peace and everyone else wanted peace, but Kubo wants war. And so, and there, I think it's great about this movie is you, you as the audience are watching these things happen and you see how they could have been prevented, but the other characters don't know what happened 
but you do. And so you're just seeing it unfold and you're just like, no, like, ah, oh, that could have been preventable, but you can't do anything because you're just an audience member. But the characters don't know that. They don't know what happened. So you just have to watch all this unfold. You just have to watch it crumble. And that's really, that's a really good job of directing and with the script. Uh, cinematography in this movie is great. There's a bunch of night sequences involving gunfire and stuff, and that's all fantastic. The music is great. The music brings a vibe from the older eight movies with the sounds that you hear, the drums. There's lots of drumming, and it all reminds you of the old movies, and that's carried on into the next movie as well. The movie was composed by Michael Giacchino. He does a lot of Disney movies, and he, has, he did Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and War for the Planet of the Apes. So, war breaks out between the apes and the humans, and it's just the apes are slowly winning. They are taking humans and putting them in cages like they would to the apes. And it ends up that Jason Clark and his wife find Caesar, and he's still alive. And they want, and Caesar knows what happened, so obviously he wants to take down Kubo and prove that Caesar is alive and Kubo was the evil one. So they go and end up trying to take over the human. Jason Carr ends up taking the side of the apes against his own kind because he knows what's good and what's bad and he wants to do the right thing. So it's really remarkable to see a human bonding with the apes like they do in this movie because the apes are just so humanistic. They are so relatable to us as species. And I think that's a great thing about this trilogy is they do a great job of is showing that so it ends up being a climatic battle between Kubo and Caesar, and Caesar does not kill. He has well, ape do not kill other ape, and Kubo breaks that obviously early in the movie, and so Caesar ends up. Kubo is begging for Caesar's mercy, and he thinks Caesar's going to get it in because he's good, but he's not. He kicks Kubo off, dies, he's done, and that really shows that Caesar will do anything to protect his family and protect his kind. And so the, the movie wraps up with Jason Clark and Caesar meeting and you just, they know that war is inevitable now because they can't go prove to all the humans what really happened, what's the true story. They can't prove to all the apes what really happened, what's the true story. So they're just kind of sad and they have like a confrontation where they're just like, I thought we really had a chance. I thought we could do it, but they can't. And so it sets up. It's a brilliant setup. It sets up just potential war between these two species. They wanted to fix it. They wanted to stop it, but they couldn't. It's inevitable that both the species of ape and the species of human, it's in their human nature to battle. It's in their human nature to be at war. And toward the final shot, another great direction by Matt Reeves, the final shot just sees Caesar bringing together his army. He's going to bring them together to fight. And the shot just zooms in, and it focuses on his eyes, and they're big and green. And that sh the shot, I believe, the shot shows how much they look like our eyes, and how we are together, so similar as species. Uh, I re I rewatched this movie recently, and I liked it a lot more than I remember. I just forgot a lot of details in it that make it so great. Uh, I'm gonna give Dawn of the Planet of the Apes four out of five stars. I think is really great. <laughs> And War for the Planet of the Apes was even better. I'm going to review that next. So thanks for so much for watching. Please subscribe. Thanks a lot. Bye.